Doctor, you talk about genetically modified foods uh, quite a bit. How, do we know much about them? I mean, they're relatively new. Do we know the long-term effects, and, and why do we always hear to try to stay away from those? Well, that is probably one of the biggest challenges that we are dealing with as a society in America today. Mm -hmm. Europeans will not take genetically engineered food from us. As a matter of fact, a year or two ago, the European government was not accepting beef from America because of all the chemicals, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the Americans came back and said, okay, we're not going to take your Italian cheese. And it's kind of like, what is going on here, you know? So genetically engineered products really didn't start really big until about the early 1990s. Mm -hmm. And probably the, the biggest cult we have to deal with is, is Monsanto. Monsanto is the one that creates the seeds. So they have seeds that don't replicate themselves. So these, they have altered these seeds genetically. And I have done a lot of research on this genetically modified, what's going on. It's a genetically modified organism. And so what they're doing is that they're, they're tricking these organisms. Like they'll take the gene from a fish, sole, flounder, that's used to cold, put it in a tomato plant so the pl tomato plant will be resistant to frost. Mm -hmm. And they're creating these genetically engineered organisms. They oftentimes will use a virus to alter the genetic potential of what's going on inside of those foods. And it's literally tricking our bodies. Because see, our bodies have like certain templates that they have to follow. So they're using these genetically modified seeds. So supposedly they'll be more resistant to pests mm -hmm. and herbicides. So what Monsanto then developed is Roundup. Roundup is the herbicide that they'll spray on, on these plants so these plants will not die because they've been designed to be resistant to that herbicide, but it, it kills all the little other plants and weeds around. It makes farming a lot easier. So in the human body, there are certain cells that interlock with each other. It's pretty much like the C and the T. Mm -hmm. And once you alter that, you're altering normal physiology. When you order, alter normal physiology, what's going to happen is you're going to have digestive distress, you're going to start having chronic allergies. And I know that the big challenge in America today that we're having all this gluten sensitivity, the perfect example, is wheat. So we have genetically engineered wheat and we have genetically engineered soy. Now, 70% or more of the soy in the United States today is genetically engineered. Usually it's extracted using hexane. This is a biblical principle, and I don't want to start throwing Bible out to people, but in the Bible, God said, eat food from seed-bearing plants. There is something called, are you ready for this? Big new word, epigenetic transgenerational diseases. Epigenetic, this is going to be a new word, epigenetic transgenerational disease conditions called by altered RNA and DNA. There was a very wise dentist, and his name is Melvin Page. Pottinger cats. They had cats at an island. They changed the food in certain of the cats, and within a generation or two, those cats were negatively infect, affected. Mm -hmm. So what's happening in America today is that we have kids that were born in the 70s, and then those kids had kids, then those kids had kids, and in that interim, in the 90s, these children are having more children, but we're eating more and more and more food that's genetic altered. Mm -hmm. I believe that's a problem with obesity. They've done studies with laboratory animals that they have fed them the genetically modified food and they, they pass away, they die. You say, why do they do that for? Because our bodies can't function on cellular food that's been altered. I'm going to bring this back up here again. This is, this is a normal fat molecule. See, fat molecules are C-shaped, normal, in nature. You modify that. So let's just say you have genetically engineered soy oil and then you, you heat it with a metal catalyst and it twists. Like, this is double trouble. So now you're trying to put in a trans fat from genetically modified soil into the human body. 25% of the fat we consume today comes from, 25% uh, of the fat we consume today comes from genetically engineered soy oil. I mean, uh, imagine the magnitude. Mm -hmm. We have all these bizarre health problems from eczema and asthma and ADHD and pain syndromes. And you know, I read some research about how gluten, which is usually coming from this genetically modified wheat, 
amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, that's ALS and MS, mm -hmm. you have all these bizarre neurologic conditions today. It comes back to some very simple principles. Your brain sends messages on a layer of fat. That layer of fat is called the myelin sheath. You can't fool Mother Nature, as wise as we think that we could. So I have a rule I tell my patients where I speak at throughout the United States. You have God made and man tampered. Man tampered will never be better than God made. So you cannot take an oil or a seed and modify it without altering the physiology in a person's body. You know, I've been practicing since 1978. I never in the world would have thought I would have seen the number of bizarre health challenges that I'm dealing with today. And you know, I practice clinic as a chiropractor, but I'm also a drugless doctor. And I would have never have thought that I'd be having these individuals coming in that have chronic fatigue and MS and lupus mm. and skin conditions based on the foods that they're eating. Because mm. I do diet sheets on everybody.